Hey, this is Dino, and I'm showing you a um, integration of the Apogee Edge developer portal with Azure AD, with OpenID Connect and Azure AD. So I am actually signing in from the home page of the developer portal that I configured with the OpenID Connect provider. And you can see I've effectively logged in. Uh, and now I can see my first name, last name, um, I've got my email address. All of that is configured. Um, and I've also got my, um, my apps associated to that uh, user ID. Okay, so this is from the user perspective. And then when I log out, um, I just log out and I can log in again. Flipping over to the administrator, if I go into, uh, first I need to, I need to go into uh, the modules uh, panel and look for OpenID Connect and you'll see OpenID Connect is enabled. Uh, I've already enabled that. I've done the git push that's required. And then what I want to do is configure it. So I'll select that. I can also get to the same panel by using configuration, web services, OpenID Connect. All right. So in there, I can put my client ID and client secret. It's a little bit confusing uh, to uh, figure out exactly what that is. And to, to uh, eliminate that confusion, I went to uh, and followed along this guide, which is called a Developer's Guide to Auth with Azure Resource Manager API. And it talks about exactly what you need to do in um, the Azure Administrator to get uh, administrative panel to get the client secret and so on, which I can also walk you through. All right, so client ID, client secret, uh, and then the authorization endpoints. And that, once you've configured, uh, you can see the endpoints here. Um, we've got the token endpoint and the authorization endpoint. Those are the important ones. Okay, so I've done that. Uh, and then there's some mapping for um, the claims, the standard claims in a JWT to the things that Drupal stores. And I set that up here and save the configuration. So all of that uh, should just work. Now, I did have a problem because uh, inexplicably to me in the code for OpenID Connect, the name and the email fields in the JWT were not mapped to the fields in Drupal stored for the user. In other words, we did have mapping for given name to uh, the JWT given name to Drupal first name and the JWT family name to the Drupal last name for the user, but not for email to email and name to name. I don't know why. So uh, what did I do? I went into the, uh, the code and uh, look for OpenID Connect user properties to skip, and I basically eliminated uh, name and email from those uh, properties to skip. And these are um, the claims, or uh, yeah, claims in the JWT that will be uh, mapped uh, if they are available. Sorry, these are user entities, um, user entity properties that will be mapped uh, if available. And once you do that, um, then you'll, you'll get the administrative panel and you'll be able to do this mapping appropriately. Okay, so uh, the last thing that I had a problem with was um, uh, decoding the ID token. And with Azure, uh, the ID token contains all the information. The way the Drupal module was constructed, it always insisted on uh, retrieving the user info from the user info endpoint, and that is configured here. And in fact, we don't need to do that because the authorization, uh, the callback is gonna give me the JWT. So rather than doing this um, ex uh, all the time, Basically, what I do is I check to see if the user data obtained from the JWT already has the email, given name, and family name. Then I'm just going to use that um, as the user info that I would like to map and um, then proceed um, that way. 
And I made that change twice um, in the OpenID Connect uh, module. All right, so after that, I get the behavior that is expected um, and what I just demonstrated. So um, that's it.